What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes, and in this video, we are going to be talking about one of the best Next.js 13.4 UI libraries I have found. So this library is called shadcn slash UI, and it has a bunch of different, really great styled components, and most importantly, they work with server-side rendering. An issue with a lot of component libraries or UI libraries I've seen is that they don't support server-side rendering. Luckily, ShadCN UI does, and so it's going to allow us to build really beautiful applications alongside having all the benefits of server-side rendering on Next.js. ShadCN UI is built on top of Radix, which is known for having a bunch of really fully featured UI components. For example, even inside of a drop-down component, they have sub-menus, they support assistive technology, there's, you know, even keyboard navigation, they're controlling the collisions and how everything works inside the menu. And so it's incredibly fully featured. And most importantly, in this video, we are going to be building this really simple project to show you guys how to set up ShadCN UI in your Next.js projects and also how to use different components within the UI library. When we build this site, we're going to have a little calendar component, which is from ShadCN UI. And we're also going to have a button to press schedule. It's nothing fancy, but it's going to give you a good idea as to how you can work with this library within your projects. Let's get into it. This library is really amazing to work with because in order to create a new next.js 13 project using the app directory, we just have to use this line of code here. So this example template shown here has the app directory, Tailwind CSS, TypeScript, ESLint, and Prettier all enabled by default. And so if we copy this line here, go over to an empty project in VS Code, open up the terminal and then paste this in. I know you guys can't really copy paste this, so I'll probably have this in the description as well if you wanna look there. We can then press enter to create our project. And the only thing that is going to ask us is what actual name do you want for your project? So I'm just gonna say my dash app. And keep in mind, it's doing all the installing up front, so it's going to take a bit to actually get started. So if it's taking a while for you, don't worry about it. It's going to get there eventually. And so once that's done, we can say CD my app to go into the created app folder here. You're going to see there are a lot of files in here. Remember in next.js 13, the main chunk of our code is going to be within the app directory. And so you'll see inside the app here, we have our layout and our page.tsx, which I'll open up. So to see what our project looks like initially, we can go into the console and say npm run dev. You'll see it has to compile our client and server. So it's gonna take a bit of a second initially. So you guys will see initially we have all of our Tailwind set up and we have all of our, you know, Shad CN UI stuff set up. And so we are good to go when it comes to developing an application. This isn't exactly an in-depth tutorial on the app directory, but our layout.tsx, if we scroll down to what it's returning, is giving us our initial HTML that has that site header, so the nav bar. And then this children here is the actual content of our page. And so if we go over to page.tsx, this is everything that we're seeing on our main site. So the big H1 and the paragraph there, everything is there. To make things simpler, I'm going to keep this div on the top here. I'm just going to delete the header and the paragraph like this. And I'm going to get rid of the div on the bottom here holding these links. So just like this. So your site should look something like this. You don't have to worry too much about the actual logic happening here if you're unfamiliar, but I'm going to make this max width not be 980 pixels. I can get rid of that and it's going to width the entire screen now. And instead of the items being at the start or to the left, I'm going to make all the items in our page be to the center. And to get started, I'm just going to have a simple paragraph with the class name equal to text-2xl, so the 2xl size for the text, and then font-bold. And this is technically a little page to schedule an initial meeting. So very simple. If we save that and go back over to our site, we will then see that it looks like this. Although this isn't a Tailwind tutorial, it's really great to see that we can use the ShadCN UI components alongside regular Tailwind styling and everything is going to look great. Now this part is really important. We are going to add a component from ShadCN UI to our project. For example, if we want to add a calendar component, I can control F and look for the calendar here. You'll see it's over here. This is the nice little calendar we're going to be using for our scheduling. And so to install this thing, we have to say npx shadcn ui add, and then the name of the component, which is going to be calendar here. So I'm going to copy this, go over to our application, clear our terminal out. And then when I say npx shadcn ui add calendar, it's going to go through a bit of a process to add this calendar to our project. If you've never used shadcn ui before, it might say, do you want to install shadcn ui from npx? You want to say yes to that. And eventually it's going to ask you, where do you want to install your components? 
One of the main things behind Shadow CN UI is that if you go into your components folder on the left here, then you go into the UI right here, these UI components are the things that are coming directly from Shad CN UI. And so that's why it's the recommended default path here. If you press tab, it's going to give you that default path of dot slash components slash UI. So now we can press enter and installing this calendar might actually take a second, but once it's installed, you will see that this calendar.tsx is going to be added to our UI folder. Also, if you get this weird error during installation saying that the link can't be found, I don't know why that happens, but it goes away once the installation is done. Okay, so now that our calendar.tsx is fully installed, we can go over to the calendar over here and we can see its initial source code. This is the nice thing about Shad CN UI is that you instantly get access to the actual source code of your components and it's right here instead of being like stuck inside of node modules or anything like that. And something I'll show in this tutorial is we can make a custom calendar component or just use a separate component with calendar inside of it. So if we go into our components folder and I'm just going to add a new file called event-calendar.tsx, we can then create a separate component that could be you know, fully custom to our specific calendar. You could imagine if you wanted to load data for a calendar, have a use state for your calendar, you can do things like this in a separate component that uses the calendar from Shad CN UI. And so I'm gonna give some examples here as to how we can do just that. I'm going to do two initial imports, which is going to be an importing of the calendar from UI slash calendar. So I'm literally importing this component right here. And then above that, I'm going to import use state from React. And we can make a super simple functional component by saying export function event calendar like this. And then inside the return statement, what we can do is we can just simply call the calendar itself. So if we go over to the documentation for the calendar, we can see an example here where they use the use state. So I'm pretty much just going to show you guys how to do this. Like we just saw, we can use TypeScript to make a simple typed use state where it has a date and then a set date as well. It's going to be equal to the use state. It's going to be either the type is either going to be date or it's going to be undefined. And the initial value is just going to be a new date like that. And I believe by default, this is going to give us the current date. And so the mode is going to be single, which means we grab one thing at a time or highlight one thing at a time. The selected is going to be equal to the date. And just like we saw in the documentation, the on select is going to be set date. And then the class name can be equal to rounded MD. And then it's also going to have a very simple border. And one important thing to understand is that because this is a use state, we need to have a use client at the top of this file. I actually have a video that's about four minutes long and it's explaining client components versus server components. Um, I will probably link that in the description, so feel free to look at that. But the main idea here is because we are using the use state, which is a React hook, it needs to actually have access to the client. And so we need to have it be a client component. But now our event calendar is fully created, which is great news. It has the use client, it has its own use state and everything looks good to go. And so if we go back over to our page.tsx, we can actually import their custom made component like this, import event calendar, just like this. And we didn't give it any fancy props or anything. So we can literally just say event calendar, close it right away like that. And if we go into our command line and then npm run dev again, as you guys can see, we now have the calendar component fully created from Shad CN UI. There can be strange issues when it comes to caching stuff on the client side. And so be aware of that. If your calendar looks weird initially, I would recommend restarting your server and also doing a hard refresh on your web browser. But something you shouldn't take for granted is that we can actually click around on our calendar. This is because it is a use client component. If we tried to render the calendar on the server, it would not have any interactivity because these little clicks are all using a handler, for example. Although it's simple, we can go and add a custom Shad CN UI button to the bottom of this just to get some more practice. So I'm gonna go back over to the documentation and look for the button. As you can see, it's right here. So for the button component, it's going to follow a very similar process where we have to npx shad cn ui add the button. One funny thing though, is our boilerplate project actually already used the button.tsx, but for good practice, if you wanted to use this in your applications, you would just go press this command. And again, it's always going to be into the dot slash component slash UI. Always install your shad cn ui components in there. And then inside of your components folder here, that's where you can have your custom components that build on top of the Shad CN UI components. 
And so you'll see it's technically overwritten our button with another button. So it's the exact same thing, which is why you didn't see any green here. Although it's pretty simple, for good practice, I'm going to go into the components and create a confirm dash event dash button dot TSX. And inside of here, we can just show another example of how you can use external Shad CNUI components to create a custom component for your next.js page. And most importantly, because it's a button, remember if someone clicks on it, that is a clicking handler and that is on the client side, right? So it has to be a use client component. And this is going to be a super simple component where we're just going to import the button from UI slash button like this. And then we are going to export default confirm event button. I'm just going to make it a simple return statement. Oh, sorry. I meant to say export function confirm event button. There we go. And it's literally just going to return the button <laughs> that we made above. I'm just going to say schedule it. There we go. Very interactive interface. And you guys might be like, why you build such a boring component? This is to show you guys if you wanted to build an on click handler, this would be a perfect place to do it. Because for example, let's say you wanted to do something like when user presses button, fire API call to schedule an event. We're not doing anything like that in this video, but to give you an idea of where the logic would be, it would be inside this confirm event button right here. And we can even just show off the on click working by going to on click right here. And you can literally just do like, you know, console.log clicked. I know I'm mad creative, but whenever we click it now, it's going to show clicked on the client side. And so now to use this custom button, we can go over to page.tsx, go to the top and then import the confirm event button, just like this. And we can put it right under the calendar right here, confirm event button. Again, it has no property. So just a simple component like this works for us. Make sure to save that file. And then we can go into our terminal and say npm run dev. And as you guys can see, we have both of our components now showing. And so if we go into our console and press schedule it, you'll see it's saying click, click, clicked. And although that might seem like a small thing, it's actually pretty huge. The fact that we're using the use client there to get the client side functionality. So guys, I hope this was a great introduction as to how you can work with the components of Shad CN UI inside of your next.js projects. Personally, I found that a good UI library, especially for the new next.js app directory that's taking advantage of server side rendering, I found that there were a lot of options out there that weren't working or were not great. And so Shad CN UI is a great choice for building your applications. Thank you so much for watching and best of luck on your next.js projects.